what uh, we have to do, I think, first of all, we should try to have uh, the Parliament and the Commission, and in particular the Commission, because it is much more in its mandate, to monitoring the situation of uh, street people in Europe. It is a social phenomenon which is there, which is growing. I uh, re reminded in the press conference that I recently witnessed, actually twice, in downtown in Paris last October, street people, Rue Saint Antoine, uh, with children. So a phenomena in a sense that it was relatively new because children living in the street, it is something that years ago was much less common in uh, uh, at least major European, uh, European capitals. And European Commission should actually monitor and should mapping what is actually happening. We have no figures, we don't have a real, uh, a real picture in order to uh, describe uh, the phenomena. People who find themselves out of work and in another EU country risk falling through the gaps in our social protection systems and ending up in destitution. In Eurodiaconia, our members know this. Every day they're faced with the consequences of intra-EU migration gone wrong. They say how people may not wish to formally request social support in case they lose their permission to stay in a country. They see how existing psychosocial conditions can be worsened by destitution and isolation. They see how a lack of knowledge on social rights and how to ask, access them leaves people at risk. They see how separation from family and other support networks can lead into a spiral of vulnerability. The problem of EU citizens being homeless in other EU countries has increased quite dramatically over the last couple of years, especially in a number uh, of countries. I mean, the internal migration is especially east-west, but not only east-west. Um, uh, I mean, we don't have any um, reliable figures, but what we hear from our members who provide services, who run shelters for homeless people, is that the increase is substantial. Just to give you one number, um, in a city like London, for instance, if you look at rough sleepers, um, almost half of the rough sleepers these days in London are actually EU citizens from other countries. We bring art into the emergency structures. I mean, in a territorial sense, we want to connect the homeless people with the territory in which they live through those artistic dynamics. Which, uh, which we give against payment. Last year, for example, we had uh, every year, in every um, center, we had a different, a different performance. We have an aim, we have a principle that is to defend the most destitute members of society. So we are a community that uh, are in a mix of volunteer and homeless. From the beginning, they are homeless, but in, inside the community, we ask them to become uh, the protagonist characters for uh, being solidar, solidar with the others, because there, there is always another. There is always the person who is not inside the community, is not in our family, that is uh, on the street. And they are the characters. Our aims as an organisation are to end homelessness in England through changing policy, campaigning, and trying to improve services on the ground. So this year, we're trying to campaign to ending rough sleeping, a challenge, but we're still uh, got the fight. <laughs> the actual numbers of rough sleepers, so this is people living on the streets, basically, um, has actually dropped a little bit, or it's kind of been quite static. But in terms of the proportion from Europe, it's, risen, it's rising quite dramatically. The objective of the project was to take the homeless off the streets and help them to go home or to find a job and a place to live in Denmark. These aims were difficult to fulfill. Instead, we found that we should support them in Denmark and as unemployed and homeless, also a kind of harm reduction. In our place, they could get a shower, clean clothes, coffee and tea, but also information about the Danish society and about the Danish labor market. 
our target group does not have access to the social welfare system. Uh, for example, they are not entitled to, to get into the night shelters. Uh, because of the lack of the correct information about Swedish society among the group, uh, they believe they have kind of a fantasy built of Sweden that there is a job for almost everyone and easy to get a job, which is not true. And the social services are not a justice to our target group's needs, if there were any. And it is not, in my view, worthy the European Union in the 21st century to have this kind of situation where we don't even know the figures, the facts and figures. So one call from today, I think, to give the Commission again a recommendation to monitor and map this increasing problem. We need to see clarification also of the legislation on, on the free movement. Whoever the people are that live on the European territory, they are human, they are human beings. We must not forget that. Europe must rebuild itself and it must be a solid, uh, Europe of solidarity. Solidarity, whatever the juridical, the legal status of the persons, they are all the same as regards the fundamental rights. The right to food, the right to health. I would even go further and say that these are fundamental rights for every human being. The Europe 2020 strategy includes, um, um, has introduced um, social innovation, or well, the concept of social innovation, as um, an interesting and useful way to provide um, evidence-based uh, methods to contribute to the reform and modernization of, um, of um, social policies, including those tackling um, homelessness. And for this purpose, the Commission has launched a um, um, number of calls for proposals for social experimentations in, in the past few years, and we will launch um, another call, um, well, in this half of, of 2000, um, 2012.